everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about my favorite subject. Yes, it's going to be boost, but also the five liter Ford. That's right, the legendary five liter Ford. And more specifically, what happens when you change the displacement on a five liter Ford and how that compares to changing things like heads, cam and intake. And while we're doing these specifically on a 302 and a 347, I want you to keep this in mind. Although we're doing it on a Ford, this actually applies to every motor. So make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. So let's find out what happens. Okay, guys, we're going to start our comparison and ask you this question. What would you rather have an extra 45 cubic inches on your five liter Ford? Or would you rather have heads, cam and intake manifold? And actually, in this case, our 347 already had a GT40 intake manifold. So it kind of had an intake manifold upgrade. So let's figure out which one of those is more beneficial, and which one makes more power. And then let's add boost to them because, you know, if we have anything, we have to add boost. <laughs> We have to head boost to everything, right? So let's jump right in. So we've got, this is actually our 347, and this was a 347 stroker. It had a Coast High Performance uh, 347 stroker kit. So it's a 3.4 inch stroke. This one was a 4030 bore. We had forged flat top pistons. And to that, we added a set of stock E7TE heads that did have a valve spring upgrade because later on we would be doing a camshaft on this thing. We put a stock five liter HO camshaft on it. I didn't have the HO upper and lower at the time. So we put a GT40 tubular upper and lower intake manifold and a, and a 70 millimeter throttle body at an inch and three quarter long tube headers. 36 pound injectors and we ran this all with a I think it was a fast management system way back then and run in this manner our I admittedly choked off 347 with a stock five liter heads and camshaft produced 301 horsepower at 5100 and right near 400 foot pounds although I think that that loaded number is probably a little bit on the high side we didn't run it down as low as I wanted to, and I'm sure guys are going to make comments, so please feel free to make comments. But if you're wondering, well, how does that compare if we were to run a 302 in the same condition? I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. I'm going to go ahead and move myself so we got a better view at this. You can see both of the lower ones. This is the 347 torque. This is the 302 torque. This is a 347 horsepower. This is the 302 horsepower. So you can see in, in each case, the bigger motor with stock heads, stock cam, and the GT40 intake manifold and long tube headers both run in the same condition. A 302, not surprisingly, makes less power than a 347. The interesting thing is they tend to merge a little bit, kind of like a 48 and a 53 LS do out at the top, uh, out you know, a good bit past the power peak. Also note that they made peak horsepower at different engine speeds. The 347 made peak power much earlier than the 302 did, even with the same components, because it just needs more airflow. And the things that are providing the airflow are kind of lacking in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our stock 302 or our stock ish 302 of the GT40. Now the question is, Richard, what, what would happen Instead of picking the increased displacement, the extra 45 cubic inches that we get from the 347 versus the 302, what would happen if we upgraded the 302 instead? So what would happen if we put like heads cam and even a different intakes and something other than the GT40? And we can take a look and I'll show you. This is actually kind of the best case scenario here. So I'll go ahead and zoom myself down here again. What we have here is the 302 that I did for CarCraft. Again, this is a stock bottom end five liter that we started with. And then we added what are probably some of the best heads, cam and intake manifold that we could on this thing. It was equipped with a set of uh, TrickFlow TFSR uh, or TFS 11R heads. These were the 170 cc small chambers. It had a uh, the TrickFlow stage two camshaft, which is much, much like the very, almost the identical uh, specs compared to, and I'll go ahead and put them up here, compared to the Extreme Energy 274 cam, you know, mid 500 lift stuff, 550, 560 kind of thing. And then 224, 232 on a 112 or 113. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. And on this, in this case, we actually, um, I didn't run an EFI intake manifold. Actually on this one, I ran a carbureted intake manifold. I ran a dual plane with a 650 um, and the same inch and three quarter heads. So this is this is one of the better, at least stock bottom end 
uh, 302 combinations that I put together, but it made, and the, and the reason that I chose this, it made 423 horsepower and 421 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well. Um, most of them are closer to the 400 range when you do heads cam and like an EFI intake manifold. But the interesting thing is, another thing that we did was I actually added a Vortex supercharger. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, a Vortex Supercharger to the 347. And the interesting thing is when we added a Vortex Supercharger with about eight pounds on this thing, you can see um, it made 421 horsepower. So very, very close to what the heads cam and intake 302 made. Now it did it as we would expect on a 347, choke off with stock heads and a stock camshaft and a GT40 intake manifold. It made it much earlier in the RPM range. It made peak power at like 55 or 5600 RPM, whereas the heads cam and intake made it all the way out here at 63 or 6400. And obviously the blower 347 with the stock components made much more torque. I mean, it was up in the 460 foot pound range and it made more torque through the whole curve but the interesting thing is it only made as much peak horsepower as a head as a really good heads cam and intake 302. So now I guess the only thing left for us to do is now we got to start adding boost to both of the modified versions. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and do what most people probably would have actually done to the 347. I don't know a lot of guys that would actually take a 347, go to all the trouble, do the stroker, and saddle it with stock heads and a stock camshaft and even saddle it i could be argued with a gt40 intake manifold although we've seen lots of those running around but not with stock heads and not with a stock camshaft what everybody would do actually instead of comparing our our 347 to a modified 302 with heads cam and intake quite personally i would pick the heads cam and intake combination but that begs the question what happens if we put a heads cam and intake on the 347 and we compare a 347 to a 302 i think we know where that's going to go and that's exactly what we did on our 347 so let's take a look at our uh, modified version as you can see i'm going to have to zoom myself right back down here well, after we added a set of RHS CNC ported aluminum heads, we added a good size comp cam. It was a 236 XFI cam, so it was 579 lift, 236, 248 degree duration split, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We also replaced the GT40 intake with an Edelbrock RPM2 EFI intake manifold. And quite honestly, in looking back, I don't think I would, I would have teamed this camshaft with this intake manifold. I would have either went down in camshaft with this intake or up to a different intake manifold with this camshaft. And we would have made even more power or, or less power and had more drivability, whatever kind of combination you wanted. But this worked out well. It made 450 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 419.7 to the 420 foot pounds. We did lose a, some power, as you can see, below 4,000 RPM compared to the stock stuff. So all the stock guys that want that sub 4,000 RPM torque, and that's the way to get it. But what we did after this is what you should do to every five liter forward or even stroker version thereof. You should add boost to it, right? And, and this is especially the case in this. I want you to look at this and, and look at the fact that when we, when we had the stock cam and stock cylinder heads and GT40 intake manifold on it, this thing made peak power at 4,700 RPM. Well, now we're making peak power out at 60, 300 rpm and it's pretty flat even at 64 and 6500 rpm so it's revving out there pretty good which is good news for a vortex centrifugal supercharger because as you go out in engine speed they just keep making more and more boost and more and more power which is kind of cool so here's what happened when we added our vortex supercharger back to our modified version this was run at about eight pounds out here at 63 or 6400 rpm 6,300 RPM. It made 666 horsepower and 559 foot-pounds of torque. This was a Vortec S trim, and it did very well. And as you can see, the power really is still climbing. We know the Vortec will support way over 700 horsepower. In fact, over 750 horsepower. So this could have kept going. We didn't run it. We could have run the 85 on it. We could have done a lot of things to make even more power. But you get the point. Take a 347, it has extra displacement, put a good size camshaft in, an intake manifold, cylinder heads, it starts making lots of power, rev it up, put a centrifugal blower on it, and all of a sudden this Vortec 347 is making some pretty serious power. But this begs the question, the 347 is doing well, but what about the little 
302. Okay, guys, just like with our 347, after we did the modifications and added a supercharger to it, obviously <laughs> things go very well. With our heads cam and intake 302 or 306, where we were making 420 plus horsepower and 392 foot pounds of torque on our carbureted TFS headed and TFS cam, ostensibly 306 or a 302, because this was actually a stock uh, bottom end. We added a Torque Storm Supercharger, centrifugal like the Vortec. A little bit different and similar kind of results. I've run both of them a lot. Here's what happened when we added the supercharger to it. Let's uh, just take a look at the test description. I want to make sure whether or not I had a... So we added the Torque Storm, a 3250 blower pulley and a 7.75 crank pulley. We added a CSU um, blow through carburetor and carb hat. Uh, obviously, we did tuning with it, and that worked out pretty well. But run with their pulley that they supply with the blower. This thing produced 617 horsepower and 537 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. It, it did kind of exactly what we expected. It didn't make nearly as much as the, or didn't make quite as much as the 347, being a 302. But after we put heads cam and intake on the 347, it made more NA. So it's obviously going to make more under boost. And that's exactly what we would expect. So the moral of the story is go heads cam and intake over displacement. But obviously the best combination is heads cam and intake and displacement, and the icing on the cake is always add boost. Our mentor and older, please make sure again, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when I do all this testing, more testing coming up.